Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Um, it's another one of those bits and bobs things. I've got clips left over from yesterday that I didn't use. It's my main watering day today, so as I'm going around, I may find some other bits and pieces to uh, include. Morning, cat. He doesn't normally come out here this time of year, it's too cold. He's probably only here because I am. Anyway, so I'll get going with my watering. Um, I did all my non-resting mounts and the vanders yesterday and the resting mounts aren't due for a while yet. So it's just pots today and not the holy clay pot. So it's just the ordinary potted stuff today. So I'll see what I find as I go round and um, yeah, put some bits and pieces together. Random stuff. This is my biggest Master Valia. And once upon a time, it was so far beyond any of my others. It was infinitely better than anything else. But it decided to object strongly to being repotted and sulked. And as a consequence, dumped quite a lot of its roots. And as a consequence, some of the older leaves look a little desiccated. But it is growing new leaves now and a fair few of them. But look what my daughter spotted at the weekend that I hadn't noticed. We do have a spike. That's the first one for a year and a half. Come on. <laughs> but I've always said that the Master Valleys in my place do better in the late, you know, it, autumn, winter and spring is their best time. They are not too happy on this in the summer because it gets too hot for them. But um, we will see one Mazda Valia bloom, hopefully, if it doesn't blast. I don't see why it should in these temperatures. It should be happy. But that's some Mazda Valia snowbird, so it's a pure white bloom from memory because it hasn't done it for a while. Last time that bloomed, it was bordering on a mass blooming. I think it had about 15, 16 blooms all open together. I remember taking it to... Uh, not a show as such, um, a country fair where we used to take a display, an orchid display, to try and rustle up customers for the Orchid Society. But it didn't work, so I think we only did it for two years. But that's the last time that one went out to play, and it was looking good then. So the plant went downhill a bit through this year. It's picking up, and it's decided to have a little go at blooming to see if it can remember how it does it, perhaps lazy thing. Now this creepy crawly, that's its growth habit, <laughs> it's going to be off that mount by the end of next year, that's for sure, it's already off the mount at the side. Um, this is Dinema polybulbon, it was an epidendrum I think once but it got reclassified and this has just got that creeping habit, the rhizome extends, new pseudobulb, Sometimes one each side, sometimes all in one direction, but it creeps, that's how it grows, and it's already off the top and already off the side. But, let's get round at an angle. These are spikes. 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 Water. <laughs> Just watered it. Uh, spike. Spike. So, spikes with an S. Now, I've completely forgotten what the hell the blooms look like on this, but given the size of the pseudo bulbs, they're not going to be huge. I don't know whether they're one at a time or several on a spike, I don't know. But the plant has got quite a few spikes. I don't know whether that's going to be a good blooming or not. There's another one tucked in there. But they are developing quite nicely. Uh, it's quite a good one there, pushing on. Um, so I don't know what they're going to look like, I've forgotten, I know I can look it up, but I quite like the surprise, you know, it's going to be a first time bloomer, I, I quite like to have that surprise, I could go away on the internet now and say, oh the blooms look like this, I'd rather wait and see, that's just me, it will, if it's going to bloom, it will get on with it, then I'll see what the blooms are, and um, yeah. Um, no, I'm looking forward to that. I've got a feeling they're going to be quite small blooms and possibly just one per spike. But again, it's a wait and see. It hasn't done it before. But it's grown well this year. The older part of the plant is the bit down the bottom. So that mass in the middle is new extensions going off in all directions. And luckily for those extensions, the aerial roots are getting back, onto the, back to the base. That one hanging out the side... Uh, roots may attach around the back. I may pull that extension 
back in. Um, it only needs to be brought back round there to the front and the roots will be touching the mount and then they'll attack. So I might actually do that to try and keep it under control. But the two heading towards the sky at the top, there's not a lot I can do with those. I've often wondered, you know, when, when an extension's growing that well, have I got the nerve to chop it and take the lead off and see if it branches? <laughs> yeah. It, the rhizomes have branched in places, it's capable of doing it, but, um, you know, it'd be, a, it'd be silly to take the new leads off, really. You know, if, if, if it grows out off the top of the mount, it will probably arch over and start growing downwards again because of the weight. But we'll see what it does. But I'm pretty sure that's going to bloom in quite a few places. Ooh, another first time bloomer on its way. I'm knocking them off the list, slowly but surely. Um, I might do a video specifically on the non-bloomers that I've had at least into their second season. Because if you've got a new plant, you you know, even though it is a non-bloomer, you can't really say it hasn't bloomed for you because it might not have reached that time of year yet. So I don't count those. But those that I've had a full growing season plus some of a previous one, you know, They've gone past their chance at least once and didn't do it. So I might actually do a separate video on those. A why won't you bloom video. <laughs> and the list is getting smaller and smaller all the time. That's good. There's an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> I don't know at what point that little pot got knocked. But um, it only needs another nudge now and it will be on the floor. And chances are it will fall face downwards and take out its new leaf. So I, I will sort that when I've got two hands and I can concentrate. Uh, I'm going to slowly go in towards that bloom, handheld. I can't be bothered at the moment to get the tripod out. But that is the bloom. I don't think it's going to do anything else. That is it. So um, if that's your thing, wonderful. It's not mine. That is ugly. <laughs> Ugly. <laughs> it is Bulbophyllum crassipes, possibly. Um, one from Archie that he wasn't sure about the name. I'll see how close I can get without it blurring. So I'm watching the screen now, not the camera. And that's about it. The blooms are minuscule. They are the deepest red with a little spot of gold in the middle. If you've got good eyesight. Otherwise it looks like a fir cone off a flipping conifer tree. That does nothing for me at all. Now, end on view, at least you can see the little gold bits in the center. But that, that to me, is taking up unwarranted space, quite honestly. That does nothing at all for me. Um, I wonder if it stinks. Dare I get my nose near it. I know you Bulbophyllums, I've learnt me lesson. No, I detect no fragrance at all. <laughs> Good because they're normally stinky. Um, they seem to go from no fragrance to something that you're not quite sure about. Uh, not sure. Uh, to those that you rear away from and never want to get within two feet of it ever again. You know, it smells like something died two years ago and you've just dug it up. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That is the bloom. That's all, it gonna, that's all it's going to do. That's as big as it's going to get. And it seems to be opening from the base of the fir cone upwards. So, that's it. <laughs> Not my cup of tea at all. Now, all this, although this nobly, this is spring dream of pollen, is misbehaving and blooming, blooming at totally the wrong time of year, but nonetheless, you know, I mean, I love... When these buds are just opening, the pink on the tips is, is dominant and... and I mean, that's a smashing set of buds, colours on those tips. Just catching a bit of sun at the moment, hazy sun, of course. But some of the blooms open virtually pure white, and some have got quite a bit more pink. Oh, there's one around the other side. Don't you fall over. Yeah, if you look round here, the, the tips are, are quite pink in places. Now, whether that's a light thing or I don't know, there's a smasher there, look. Pink on the lip, pink on the tips. 
Um, that's how I like to see it. The pure white ones don't do so much for me. But it's had a lot of blooms and it was classed as misbehaving, but still got buds forming on some of the older canes. It's going to be in bloom quite a while, but it's used up a hell of a lot of its blooming nodes now. So it's probably not going to bloom at all in late winter, early spring. My other big one that I said was behaving. I'm trying to work out whether this is going to work or not. There's some buds on this older cane are pushing now. So they're, going, they're now going to grow on. I can't stop them. They've started to move. I was hoping it would just stall for a bit and not push the buds. And there's buds forming you know, up the whole length of that cane. Now they're tiny little nubbins, as on that one. That one hasn't started yet. There's some more down there on the older cane. Um, so they've started, but they're still moving incredibly slow. Um, so what I'm gonna do, because they're both nobilies, that's prima donna, and this one isn't. But um, what I can do is now look at that for instance those buds of the the little nubbin has pushed out and just started to form buds so what I can do now is see how long it takes to get from there through there to there yeah because the other one will be almost identical and that gives me a timing my first show is towards the end of February <laughs> Are you going to behave and delay until that point? Or are you going to be silly and flipping bloom in mid-January or something daft? But I can't control it. I mean, if the buds are going to start pushing like it does look like they are, then all I can do is work out, is that going to be okay for that show or not? If it pushes ahead really, really fast, at least it will be okay for the January meeting, which is right at the end of January. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I get quite a lot of opportunities. There's nothing now in my orchid world until, what will it be? The Wessex Orchid Society meet the second Saturday of the month. So that will be the first Orchid Society meeting. So that's going to be around the middle of January. The Bournemouth one will be the last Friday of January. That's two. And then we go into February where we will have a Wessex meeting second Saturday of the month and then the Bournemouth Orchid Society show at the end of February and then the Wessex Orchid Society show in March. So, you know, starting in the middle of January, there's opportunities for you to go out and show off. And those are at sort of fortnightly intervals. So I'm going to catch at least one of them. <laughs> so you're going to get your opportunity to show off again. <coughs> Last year that got a first at one of the societies and a second at the other one. It went to both because it was in bloom long enough. And I'm hoping to get the same out of you next year. You take up an awful lot of space. You can earn your keep by getting me another certificate on the wall, maybe two. Um, it's a nice enough plant. And having rearranged those canes into like a circle, yeah, um, hopefully the blooms will look pretty good on that. But we'll have to wait and see. But I was hoping it was going to delay that blooming, but it started. But now that I'm keeping better records, I'll now know that if the buds push on this plant in the middle of December, I'll know which shows or Orchid Society meetings, competition tables, it's going to be right for, so I can plan for them. And make sure all the leaves are nice and clean and all that. All that. Oh, that's a job I hate. Cleaning leaves off to make sure there's no bits and dust and marks, because you get marked down for all that flipping sort of thing. <laughs> and can you imagine cleaning all those leaves off on a plant that big? Hopefully a few more of them will do this, because if they fall off, I haven't got to clean them. And it doesn't detract from the blooms. So uh, Anyway, that's uh, coming on with plans. We shall see uh, see where, which, which ones it gets in, and when it does first start blooming. Because obviously with the number of blooms it's going to have, there's no point in taking it to a show with three blooms out. It needs to be mostly in bloom. But it'll catch at least one of them and it'll probably catch two. One of each. Yeah. So we'll see how we do with that one. I like to plan certain plants for shows. You know, it's like Herco Glossum. That, um, that got a first last year. My Nesta got a first. Uh, 
Friedrich Siannum got a second. Uh, what else? Oh, and a couple of other odds and bits and pieces. But most of the stuff I take in is the dendrobiums because not many other people grow them. Loads of Kingianum types, they're coming out your ear holes and a reasonable smattering of nobilies as well. But there's very few people take a nobly along that's that big. So that, that one just is a bit of a spectacle, a bit of a show off. And yellow. You know, a lot of the nobilies tend to be the whites and the pinks. Might be a bit of yellow in the throat, perhaps, of the lip. But that is a lovely primrosy yellow with pink bits on, pink tips. A bit like if you could imagine that, only yellow, with a greenish throat and pink tips. That's what it looks like. Of course, I could stop talking about it and put a pop-up, couldn't I? Duh. <laughs> now, not everything works. Some people get the impression that everything I grow works wonderfully. Well, no, it doesn't. I do get losses, total losses, and I do get things that struggle. And this, you would think, is great. Because that spike's been out, was heading up towards two and a half months now, and for an oncidium type intergeneric, that's done incredibly well. I think the cooler temperatures um, have actually held that spike longer than it would have done if that had bloomed in the middle of the summer. The plant ain't so clever. Now, when I repotted that, um, I did say that, you know, the latest pseudo bulb is not quite as big as the other two. Now, this was a catastrophe. This was an emergency repot because one of the pseudo bulbs rotted, went all soggy and brown and was full of liquid, bacterial infection. Horrible. And I did say it's doing something silly and pushing a new growth out from the oldest pseudo bulb. That's not going to make it. I don't think that growth is going to progress. In fact, I'm sure it's not. So although it tried, that's not the right place. The right place is over the other side of the pot. It needs to think about pushing new growths, well, growth probably, out of this bulb at the lead, at the lead end. So not all the plants are doing wonderful. Yeah, I do have some that are struggling. That's one of them. And talking of struggling, my beautiful Dendrobium phalaenopsis spike has decided to blast. And I'm putting that down to it's just too cold out here. There's one bloom on the end that hasn't gone that straw colour. I mean, the buds haven't fallen off yet, but they've had it. That one might just hang in there. If we get a mild spell for a week or two, it might just make it. The other spike up the back looks like it should open okay. We shall see. But there's another spike coming down here, so I've got more to more to come, or one more to come, maybe others lurking in there. Because my water and frequencies dropped down, I really don't look at these plants for seven or eight days now, unless something just catches my eye out of the corner of my eye, then, you know, they just don't get picked up. Bugs are down to next to nothing this time of year, they don't like the cold either. So even if I do get the odd one or two, they're not going to breed like mad without the temperature. So they're under control. So the need to look at plants really frequently has dropped off, which is why there's often quite a few days with nothing to do out here. And if there's nothing to do out here this time of year, I don't come out here, I get on with other things. But uh, yeah, that's a shame, because that would have identified which one this was. Well, unless I can get that last one to actually open, I still won't know which one it is. As I said, I've got six in my notes, one of which has got a name, and two have already been lost, and I don't know which ones I've got left until I get a bloom to open. Well, that's not going to open for sure, is it? So, oh, I'll have to wait and see. You can't win them all, that's what I say. Um, yeah, Phalaenopsis for me didn't do well. They're doing a lot better now. You know, I mean, the new growths are nice and strong, bright green leaves, and eventually the old tatty leaves like these can be pulled off or helped. <laughs> helped to become deciduous is the expression I like. I'm going to help you become deciduous because you've got tatty leaves, but not until new growths are strong with good leaves to photosynthesize. Because although those leaves have got bug damage and a little secondary infection that's now been cured, that leaf can still photosynthesize. To take it off would be silly until it's totally replaced by nice new canes like that. So you've got to use your sort of judgment. If you've got a cattleya with 12 leaves and one of them looks a bit manky, well the plant can sacrifice that leaf, it'll do fine. If you've got two leaves and you take one off, you've just reduced its photosynthesis by half. 
Once it goes yellow, it stopped working. So there's no point in leaving it there, quite honestly. So that's that. What else? I'm not sure if this is my only variegated orchid. No, one of my Neophoneshes is variegated as well, but it's certainly my only variegated Dendrobium. This is Monili form. And this has what are highly likely to be buds. Not many, there's one on that cane and one on that cane near the top. And again, it's the position. I mean, this, this had, I had two versions of this on the go. This mounted one, which is only just getting going. It's a quite a young plant, basically. And I had a potted version that just went over. And at the time it started to go downhill quite fast, it, it did quite a few kikis, chucked quite a few out. <laughs> and um, some got planted earlier last year. I, I got a feeling Rose had those in amongst the, the load I sent to her, I'm not sure. I mean, we can't ask Rose at the moment for reasons I'm sure you all know. And um, I'm going to go yippee when Rose comes back on the scene. She's one of those people, in my mind, just needs to be around. But much more important things on her mind at the moment. I'll get that done first. Um, but yeah, that looks like it might bloom. Now, somewhere lurking up the back is that I've started some more kikis. I think there's two or three in a pot, but... Uh, uh, we'll wait till they do something, but hopefully this time round it's actually going to bloom rather than produce kikis. You don't get very often get a dendrobium push a kiki out right at the top of a cane. It's going to do that. It's more like halfway down or nearer the base. They could still be kikis. Still a wait and see. But at the moment I can see two possible spikes on that. Pretty little blooms. That um, I haven't seen them for a while, but it'd uh, be nice to see them again. And I quite like these variegated leaves. Yeah, it's quite a nice little plant, but that is, you know, a young plant. Uh, they can grow quite a lot bigger and bigger canes and everything than that. That is still classed as quite a young plant. So to get some blooms is good stuff, hopefully. I was just scanning round because I'm in the middle of watering. There's plants all over the place. All those shelves are cleared. They're all dripping and doing stuff. But just scanning round while I finish my coffee, practically everything on that shelf's doing pretty good. Looking good. There's a couple of rescues up the near the glass up that end that are pulling on nicely. I don't really class them as rescues anymore. Everything on this shelf is uh, pretty good. So a couple of um, small small ones in amongst there is my sweet sugar that's only got one growth, well a back bulb and a growth, so that's a bit weak at the moment. Um, all the restrepias and stuff are doing okay. Um, yeah, just scanning round. Seas of green and spikes coming and stuff. And then I took a collective look at this flipping lot. I've got more rescues in the... Um, Old Fashioned Odontoglossum and Oncidium Intergenerics than all the other types of plants put together. Um, I mean, in amongst here, there's a there's a couple of rescues. This is a rescue. I mean, it's got a nice new growth, again, nice new growth, but it's not in a strong state. This one's not doing too bad. The Nelly Isla's still alive with a spike. You know, I wouldn't class that as bad. This has always been a tatty plant, but um, it's full of buds at the moment. So we'll, uh, we'll live with that. But this table and a couple of other oddities are not doing good. I mean, that's not an Oncidium, that's a Maxillaria. <laughs> um, um, these are the two Brassier leads that I took off the main plant because the main plant started to rot. They, they'll be fine, you know, although they're rescue, you know, they will do fine. But there's some that are not doing good. And I'm making a snap decision that I'm going to do my absolute best to stick to. In the next growing season, if any of these rescue plants decide to put a spike up on their latest growth, I'm going to take it straight off. I'm going to give the plant a whole growing season without having to try and produce a spike. And put all the energy into the leaves and the roots and establish hopefully good root systems with nice strong new growths coming out during the grow growing season. Mature the ones that are coming on now, they'll be a bit weaker if they're pushing on in the winter, and get some strong plants back. 
then the following year think about letting them bloom or maybe in the winter whenever they choose to do so but some of my plants are going to if they do attempt to put up a spike I'm going to take it off and give the plant the chance otherwise it just weakens that latest growth you know and then it's got to struggle to put up the next growths and the chances are the leaves will fall off one of the older bulbs and the plant just never builds up strength and gets any size to it you know, I mean, a lot of these have got one new growth. The two um, brassias here are, are only the new growths. They've got, they haven't even got backup, but they, they're pushing out good root systems. They'll be fine. I've got no worries about them. It's a vigorous plant. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, for, it's next year's decision, but I'm making it now. I'm getting fed up with Oncidium and Intergenerics, especially the old-fashioned Odontoglossums, just not growing into big plants. I mean, in the past, there's been a lot of, um, you know, like my um, wild cats, my bobcat and my cheetah. You know, they, they were not a strong plant. They were in a state of being rescued and they put up a spike and I let them bloom. And I shouldn't have done. I should have done that last time and then they'd be building up that strength this time round. But, you know, pretty blooms, always an influence. But this year, any plants that are in a state of rescue, as I get into that ne next year's growing season, it's plant first, blooms later. And we'll have a go at that for a season. See how that does. Right, I've done well today. Everything in pots. I've just got those few on that bottom shelf to do the two biggies there and the two uh, other ones. <laughs> um, but this... Um, Epidendrum radicans type. Um, it had two spikes when I got it. Um, one went over quite quickly, one lasted quite well. But all the new canes, except for this one, which is lagging behind, have now got spikes. Um, and this should be a nice succession of blooms. Obviously, this one will be out first. It's just starting to show its uh, colour. It's a bright orange, basically. And then this one will probably be next, and then followed by the others. They last a reasonable time, so I've got a feeling this is actually going to be in bloom a good couple of months because it will, you know, phase in and phase out with the number of spikes it's got. There's five spikes on there. So that's uh, coming on quite nicely. Um, <clears throat> I'll end that today. Um, both, I know I don't mention these because they don't bloom until the new year. Um, but both of the new growths on these, which I'll remember what it is in a minute, it's going to have to be a pop-up. Neither of those have got tags. They're both the same plant, but both of the new growths have actually got sheaths, so they will bloom eventually. <laughs> Very fragrant, when I remember what it is. <laughs> and my um, Odontoglossum naivium is, um, it appears to be doing very well, although... It's got loads of new growths on them, but none of them are as big as previous growths. Um, and the chances are it's slowed up now, it's winter time, so they may never get to their full size. But the strength of the plant will be there for next year, and any more new growths that come out should be good. And that's um, flipping great selogeny at the back. That's pushed out a, a pretty good root system now, so I think next year with a root system behind it, the growth should bloom. Never bloomed that one. <clears throat> um, so that'll do for today. And uh, I'll tag these clips on the end of what was left over from yesterday and make a video out of it. And um, we'll see where we go from there. But quite honestly, that's I, I feel very good today. I've watered everything in normal pots in one go. And given my sort of seven, eight day cycle, that hasn't got to be done till after the Christmas holidays now, so I can just forget about those. They, they just sit there and do their thing. <laughs> and very slowly use up the water and the little bit of feed they've just had. So uh, nothing more to do on the uh, normal pots. Obviously the mounts still need to be taken into account and so do the holy clay pots. Um, they come round about every third or fourth day at the moment. Because um, with a clay pot obviously it dries a little bit slower than uh, a bit of a mount but I, I think of them like mounts you know because they are very very airy with all those holes and chunky bark in there they do dry quite fast but this time of year with the lower temperatures I want to make sure they're really dry before they get some more as opposed to when we get back round into the growing season they'll probably go back to being watered every other day 
Um, they'll, you know, they should be should all be pushing out new growths and stuff. There are sheaths with buds in uh, up amongst that lot. <laughs> and my um, two ancept spikes are forming their buds now. Uh, how long they'll take before the buds open, I really don't know. Um, I didn't keep the record last time it bloomed, so I don't know, but um, I will this time. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed those bits and bobs, little snippets of information, little <laughs> sad tales, cheery tales, all that sort of stuff. And I'll see you next time. And if I don't see people beforehand, um, f uh, I mean on their videos, not on mine. I'm bound to do at least one more video before Christmas. But uh, have a good holiday. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy what, to me, the season is all about. It's the togetherness. In my book, it's got nothing to do with religion. It's just a nice time for everybody to gather together, see people you don't see for quite a while. I mean, my youngest son's coming down. I haven't seen him since June, because he's too far away at university. So, you know, and he hasn't seen his sister since June. You know, so it's a nice gathering. My eldest son pops in now and again, because he doesn't live too far away. And he's got a puppy now that they like to take for walks on the beaches and where he lives is quite a long way from the beach. So he comes down this way more often than the other two can. So, yeah, have a great time. Relax. And as Ed said, don't drink too much. <laughs> Unless that's your thing. In which case, do whatever turns you on. Have a good holiday. Have a good time. Be with friends, family. Enjoy that season.